So, hello everyone and welcome. This is actually going to be a YouTube premiere where I uh I'm I'm just I have recorded this <laughs> uh over the course of last week uh in preparation for my uh travel plans to Copenhagen since I won't be able to do an actual live stream, but I actually wanted to have a video live well, kind of life <laughs> on the day. So this is um, this is a small one that a small illustration that I've done. And um, let me explain a little bit why I really like this one. And by the way, um, you know, before we get started, I hope everybody can hear me, and I hope um, you guys are all settled. But the I'm just going to use today the graffiti uh, set, and uh, I'll explain a bit, a, li a little bit about what I wanted to do with the illustration, or at least what the, what the idea was behind it, because it has an idea. It's not just leaves and, and berries and, and and so on, right? It, it served the purpose for me at least on on drawing, right? Um, so I I'm using the graffiti set, and the graffiti set is a set that um it's it's kind of a water soluble ink uh mixed with graphite so it kind of acts like a watercolor um just that if it dries it it is harder a little bit to uh move around but the colors are really like i really like them and they're really muted and yeah i think that <laughs> um they really go well together with uh, with a lot of uh, a lot of designs. There are actually some of my favorite, as you can see, <laughs> my favorite used uh, colors. Now, why did I do this illustration? Why did I try to do it? Is I was trying to see if I can do a lot of leaves that interlap each other. <clears throat> like sometimes we try to do things that don't really touch each other or um, you know, sometimes it's very hard to draw something that is behind something else. Um, so I devised this exercise, and in the past I used to do it with just um, with just lines. I was trying to do kind of lines that go behind each other, and it got. This is how I learned how to do a lot of a lot of my drawings, and this is how I learned how to how to draw something. Um, you know, without without actually having a drawing first, or let's say a pencil, because I know how to draw um, all of these leaves. That actually theoretically it makes them look three D because they look like they are behind each other, um, and this is why I've done this. I I wanted to see if I can make a design uh, that still looks nice. But it has all these leaves that interleave. Initially, initially my idea was I wanted to do some negative painting, negative watercolor. But then I realized that I actually started doing it in, in, uh, with a micron pen. And I'm like, yeah, but negative painting <laughs> in watercolor means you don't have any lines. You just follow, um, and you create the lines and you create the shapes with color. So then then I had to switch gears. So initially I said, oh, negative painted. And I started I started painting all these leaves and all this stuff. And then I realized that I started the wrong, wrong way because, yeah, you need to be careful with negative painting to not have lines. Anyway, that all is in the past, right? So <laughs> um, uh, now we ended up with this. And... I really thought that this corner design is really nice because then I can always add sentiments and you know I can I can use this design for many things um, and I can pair it up with many many others so then I just decided okay this is a good one we're gonna go with it um, and it's gonna be it's gonna be perfectly fine um, so that's why I did it, and in the end, I also was trying to to see if I can uh, 
if I could draw uh, these mods. So I've been I've been studying mods for a while now, uh, and slowly, slowly, I'm getting better. Like my first attempts were really laughable. <laughs> Surface to say, um, let's say two streams back, you would see one of them, and it wasn't looking very well. <laughs> uh, I wasn't, I wasn't very proud of what I've built. <laughs> so uh, this, this is a, this is just a, a fun little, little thing. Uh, it definitely takes practice because mods, how you, how I draw them, they're, they're very technical in a way. Um, because they need to be a little bit symmetrical and if they're a little bit off um, then the eye is really seeing it it's so weird um, so yeah trying really hard not to not to dwell on it right like the more i practice the more they will become better <laughs> but for now they're not very good um so notice that i used only one color i will i'll come so there's two ways of doing you can always mix colors on the go so once you add a color you can add the second one or you can decide to add the second colors later on once the first layer is dry and that is also very good um so you know this is what i'll try to do i'll try to make it very cheerful but you know just using this palette well, i'll try to see maybe go a little bit into a more autumny mood and add add some red here and there and i'll come with a brush and i'll um I'll work the color in, okay? Don't worry. I know it looks weird, but I will spread it around and then, you know, blend it in. This is how we do it. So you just add the color and then you come and you blend it in. And this is the beauty of, of the graphite tint ones is that they can be reactivated even after they're a little bit dry and they look really nice. So. You see, now the outlook of this leaf completely changed just because I added some red here. And that's going to be really nice. And let's see where we can add here. Okay. I'm going to add to all of them a little bit red just to signify that we are kind of entering the autumn, right? Um, I just didn't even realize that September has passed us by. I just didn't realize. And I'm just realizing right now that, <laughs> that we're actually in the middle of autumn. And I was still expecting summer to come. Because for some reason I didn't have a proper summer. <laughs> so <laughs> it's so weird. Anyway. I wanted to say thank you for every um everybody that joined me lately i've seen a lot of new subscribers on my channel and i'm really grateful for that um it's really nice to see that there are people interested in what i do and even though nowadays i'm i'm mainly doing uh let's say live streaming uh it's something that i enjoy and you know maybe when i get a little bit more time we can graduate to something a little bit different content. But for now, I'm just happy drawing. And, you know, because I have this live stream in my mind, I'm always saying like, no, you know what? I have a live stream and I'm doing that. And, um, you know, that hour I can ensure that I'm spending it... Um, I, I wanted to say for real, but, you know, otherwise I always say, well, I'll do it in the weekend or, you know, I'll, I'll draw something in the weekend or something. But because I am scheduling these live streams, um, I cannot lie to myself. I, I need to do it. I It needs to happen. And that actually, in the end, makes me practice more, uh, which is a good thing. 
don't get me wrong it's a very good thing so I'm using a grayish um, a grayish color uh, which is called actually gray green which is let's say it says it as it is it's a gray green it's a very pale green it's really nice and I'm trying to make it look into a, like a gradient and so on or consider if I add a little bit of blue maybe let's see how that will look like this is a little bit of slate green here slate green is a blue green that this set has so I'm adding a little bit of blue to this gray stuff to make it a little bit more interesting okay yeah it looks very good I'm not gonna do all of them but some of them will have a different color so let's let's continue with that one let's see how many of them I'll do and then uh, we'll decide the latest um, I might want to do some real blue leaves as well uh, and then yellow with red so for now you know let's try it um, I'm always looking for nice combinations to see you know what are the nice combinations that will work with the leaves that I'm doing or with the designs that I'm doing um, I think I need to get a little bit more into color combinations and and so on but for now things things are looking good um, if you're wondering how I mean where do I find the inspiration I mean how do I start uh, start drawing I am uh, very much in I am like 90% of my time I am on Pinterest and I'm looking for things on Pinterest and um, there are a lot of drawing tutorials so what I usually do is I, I look up these tutorials and um, you know I try it and the funny part is uh, I don't know why some people think drawing is is easy it's not it it takes quite a lot of practice right sometimes it takes hours of practice to get to this level and I want to say that that although there are many tutorials on Pinterest and many things that are interesting and you can learn from you still need to put in the hours and that is the beauty of art you still need to put in the hours nothing comes for free um, and I don't think there is one person that could say that they are like a, a talent right and that they will know how to do everything I'm pretty sure even though they are talented they have spent those hours and they have you know uh, done the work every artist that I know has done that so uh, pretty sure it's a common thing I'm, I need to be very careful with these ones because I don't want to go over the lines and this is why I'm using although I'm using a number five brush it's a really pointy brush so I'm ensuring that I can go into the tiny little crevices of everything and you know I'm not gonna go overboard with it um, let's do this one here Yeah, one, two, three, maybe this one also. I really like this green as well. So sometimes I use this one, sometimes I use the Japanese watercolors. There's no rhyme and reason. I think I love them all. It's just depending on the mood. And I think that is, there's no, you know, you can, you can say it all you want and you can, you can follow anybody you want and says that there is a perfect palette that you can have or there's a perfect set of watercolors that you can have. I do not believe that there is such a thing. I believe that um, 
there's different moods and there's different different mediums that you can use on different occasions and we shouldn't be ashamed of using any of them and sometimes I like to use more opaque watercolors and sometimes I like to use my Holbein watercolors which are a little bit different um, and sometimes I use my Daniel Smith and my Schminke and that's okay mm. I am not uh, I am not a, a person that only uses one set and one set only and that is the bad set <laughs> and of course always I will try to figure out new sets and new new things to do um, I am leaving some without the gray because I want to do some some blue ones So hence why I'm not utilizing all of the leaves. Okay. Now la pièce de résistance. I'm going to actually use the ocean blue for them. And then I'm going to add some port to it. So let's see which ones this ones. This ones why not? This ones look how beautiful this this blue is and I think it looks nice on the leaves I haven't decided yet what I'll do for the background and maybe I won't do anything for the background maybe I'll just leave it like that that might be a good idea you know you don't always have to have a background you don't always have to have something I think just leaving it like this is also would look nice. Maybe I want to do the big leaves with purple. That would be cool. I've been recently to the zoo. I mean, I recently also discovered that there's a zoo. Uh, there's a zoo in my city. I didn't know there was a zoo before. And I live here for six years. So weird. You live in a city for six years and then you only realize at the end that there is a zoo. <sighs> Claudia, Claudia, Claudia. What what should we do? Um, so I only recently realized that they have a zoo and I've been going there. And it's not only a zoo, but it's also a botanical garden kind of, kind of thing. And <laughs> it's, uh, it's really nice. It's you can see so many different type of flowers and leaves that you never knew existed and the colors are beautiful and there are leaves that are blue and and different and you think are these alien flowers are these from other planets it could be but no they are pl they are plants from our own planet but from just different climates and you know we sometimes are used to leaves that are you know, are just green. <laughs> but that's not really the reality that we live in. I think I think our world is much more colorful and much more beautiful than what we tend to imagine. So, yeah. That's why I'm always doing these kind of leaves and these kind of things in totally different colors. And I think I need to do that one as well. This one in the back gonna be nice blue yep and then I'm gonna do also this one I know it's a bit weird mm. this one is gonna be blue yeah that's good And then I'm gonna add some port in here. This is a really nice purple. And then I'm gonna do the last blue one. It's gonna be this one behind all these berries. It's gonna be the last blue one. Yep. And then all the other ones are just going to be really weird off color. 
like yellow yellow and red maybe more red and then a little bit of yellow maybe that will be or did we say purple we said purple okay let's do purple and let's do this aubergine aubergine is <laughs> it's so funny because i'm reading the dutch version aubergine is actually eggplant so this is the color of the eggplant look how beautiful this one is and i'm going to add more water and i'm going to water it down so aubergine in dutch is eggplant so there you go that's your learning for today and i need to <laughs> the way i'm doing it as i'm i'm pointing i'm pointing the brush like this and this way i can ensure that i have stability right some when it's a big area i can use the belly of the brush but if i wanna uh, do things on a different angle then i will straighten the brush just so that i have full control over what i'm doing okay it's nice and maybe i'll add just a slight bit of yellow on it um, by the way, purple and yellow, really nice combination. If you didn't know about that one, they are also very complementary colors. So they usually look really nice. Hence, hence is one of my favorite color combinations. And I think the berries, I want them to be really uh, yellow, orange, red they will really stand out if we do this this is all cool colors technically so you know yeah then i will do this yeah and then we go for the last two leaves you see it's not that difficult sometimes i just i just make a, a a line art design because when i'm doing line art it actually calms me it's so weird because i just i just start i just start in a corner and then i go from there i don't always have a plan in mind on how i'm doing this but yeah Okay, let's bring that red back. Mm, should I do red or yellow? What did I say? Okay, we can do we can do red on the tips and yellow more to the to the bottoms. And I think red also fits very well with this uh, with this purple. It's really nice. It gives it an a different air. Okay. Yeah. And then we're going to come in also with some yellow just for com making it more complicated. <laughs> wow. Now I've discovered a new combination, red with purple, looks really nice. And now if I add the yellow, by the way, yellow is the, my most used color out of this whole, whole set. The yellow is the one that I love the most. And the yellow in this set is called the Russet. Uh, it's really nice yellow. Okay come here okay and then this one also this one it's nice to see that you can 
mix and match colors directly on paper. By the way, the paper I'm using uh, is actually Fabriano cold press watercolor paper. Um, it's still a very nice color. Uh, it's, it's really nice cold press watercolor. I'm really loving. <laughs> really loving this. Okay, let's see. We're going to use my favorite one, the yellow, and then we're going to come with some red just to make it nicer. But let's use the yellow. Okay. I've added color and now I'm just spreading it around. Doesn't need to be so concentrated. Hmm. When I'm going to come with the red, it's going to look much better. Now you notice what the problem is with, with the graphite inset, is that it dries out pretty fast. So you have to be very, very, very fast when you're adding color. Not wait for me, not wait like me. So I'm going to have to let them dry after I come with the second layer, which is going to be red this time. I'm not mixing them while they're still wet because it's not going to give me the look that I want. It's going to be too washed out. So, you know. Maybe I should just just gone with total red berries, but no. First we do them with the yellow and then we add the red. We really deepen. We really deepen all the colors. And this cluster is an interesting cluster. It's a tree. It's a tree cluster. Notice here that I forgot to do the tip of this leaf. And we're going to do it now. Yeah, there you go. Finalize that part. Okay. Um, I'm going to concentrate on... On the butterfly until this one's dry out. And then I can add the red. And the red is going to make them really stand out, okay? So don't worry about that. Uh, now, you might wonder, what do I want to do? Uh, I think I'll try this juniper, juniper color and then with some pretty blue. Juniper looks like aubergine, actually, which is very interesting. the petals I want them to be as transparent as possible so that's why I add the color here and I'm going to come with really lots of water and just spread it around like really spread it around and here as well this is um gonna be this is gonna be a nice mop and I'm bringing in the red color from the other side so I can mix them on the go here okay and I think I did two less of this juniper here and now I have to pull the color into the red yeah, that's good. I'm really careful. 
but this is a nice moth right This is where I should have waited for it to be totally dry, but that's okay. Okay. Yeah, this is a nice one. Then the moon in the middle is gonna be yellow. It's gonna be a nice moon. Yep. And then once it's all dry, it's going to be like gray for the body, but, uh, and maybe I'll add a little bit more red here and there. Okay. Now this ones should be dry now. And now we're going with the red and especially for the ones underneath here, I'm going to do them red. I'm going to, I'm going to pen paint the shadows basically. So, And now it's gonna make them really 3D because the underneath, the um, berries underneath are darker color than the ones on front. And the ones on front we can do uh, an extra layer of yellow to make them more stand out. So this is how we're gonna get that 3D effect, basically. So you see, you not always need a lot. Uh, but yeah, I think this is enough. I think this one needs a little bit more color because otherwise it gets lost. Yep. I really like how delicate this one is. It's so nice. Because now on the second layer, everything will dry out much faster. I cannot actually do the red color on too many at once. Um, this is why I'm always doing one here and then immediately going. And maybe I'll try here, but you'll notice that it will dry out very fast. Okay. Okay. I'm hoping that you are still enjoying this and you know, it's probably not going to be my usual one hour, one hour and a half live stream. Uh, because this is a smaller illustration. But I'm hoping you have some fun and you're learning something new. So what, what did we learn today? We learned that to make something really pop, you need at least two different colors maybe. Like... Gradients are nice to do, but when you have a gradient that is made out of two different colors, then, for example, here, when I added the red and, the s and so on, then that makes it really pop, okay? Uh, okay, and I'm actually going to choose some of these leaves to make even more pop, I think. And I'm thinking I need some blue for some of these ones. Yep. 
you know, not everything needs to, not that all of them needs to be the same. Some has a blue tint, some have yellow tint, you know, some have pink tint. Why not? Yep, now they're really going to stand out. Okay. Yep. Now the question is has the, that one been dry? And the answer is probably yes. So let's see if we can. We can do the middle with gray. Yep. Yeah, we can. And now I'm going to put a lot of things on me, but I'm going to use the tip of the brush go into to draw some lines and I really need to have a very steady hand here so I'm not pressuring pressing with belly I'm not doing anything of the sort it's very light I'm doing the same color because why not? And now I'm going to do the lines more this direction here because this is a different different one. So I'm not doing it with a black pen or anything. I'm just doing it with the same color. And that's going to give it a little bit more structure. You know? All in all, I think we managed to do these illustrations really nice. It's a really simple one. It's just leaves and everything. But this can be, you know, I can put this one in any scene that I can think of. You know, I can have a girl here or I can have anything. I can use this one to create a frame or anything that I want, really. Uh, thank you so much for watching so far. Uh, thank you for uh, participating in this premiere. I hope to see you next time. Uh, and I have some more surprises left for you. In the meantime, uh, have a fun night. And I hope the weather holds for you. And then you have a wonderful autumn. Thank you so much.